Hello everyone. In this presentation, I would like to share with you some useful tips when it comes to running your marketing mix modeling in an efficient way. This is what I call project management in marketing mix models. I think it matters a lot to have a project management process when it comes to running your marketing mix modeling. In fact, if you want to have reliable and scalable operations, it's very important to follow the different steps of the flow. This will ensure efficient delivery to the final client, but at the same time, make it easy for you to run any subsequent refreshes, updates, or rescoring. You are certainly familiar with the marketing mix modeling process that we have introduced in season one. Here, we are going to revisit a little bit that process by including a few other steps, and more importantly, by looking at what are the different tasks that need to be achieved internally and externally to prepare for each phase of the process. As a preliminary step, we have added to the known process two phases. The first one is the pre-sales and closing, and the second one is the handover that the sales team need to have or to provide to the marketing analytics team, meaning the team that will be delivering the marketing mix modeling project. Then you have the other steps that you know of, like the project kickoff, then the data collection, preparation, and check-in, followed by data processing and understanding, model building and evaluation, all the way through to presenting the results, insights, and recommendations. Pre-sales and closing. Depending on the organization you are part of, some agencies or some organizations would have a dedicated sales team. And most of the time, it is the sales team that is in charge of scoping the project timelines, deliverables, business questions, general and specific, and also the type of team that will be working on the project. That's why it's very important that all this information is captured and is structured and is made clear in the scope that will be agreed with the client. In this phase, there is a handover from the sales team to the delivery team, generally called the marketing analytics team. In this transition, we need to make sure that nothing is lost to translation. Ideally, I would recommend that the marketing analytics team are part of the scoping of the project, so they know exactly what is the project about and what are the deliverables that need to be delivered to the end client. Now, during this phase, it's very important that the sales team articulates in a very clear document the following. The project phases, the project timelines, the different deliverables agreed with the client, the business questions agreed upon, like for example, the generic questions and also the specific questions, and make sure that all the understanding about the brand, the stakeholders are passed on to the delivery team, so they start the project on the right foot. Project kickoff. It involves two parties. We have the delivery or the marketing analytics team, and we also have the client team or the brand team. That's why there are lots of elements that need to be prepared for this meeting to be successful. From the side of the delivery team, it's very important that we understand the context of the brand and we study all the documents that have been sent to the sales team. Also, it's very important to come prepared with a detailed data request where we put all the elements that we need to collect as part of the marketing mix modeling project. When we are in the kickoff meeting, there are certain elements that we need to have the confirmation on from the client. For example, the list of deliverables, the timelines have to be confirmed in this meeting. The third element where we need confirmation on is the list of stakeholders that will be involved in the project. Who are we going to talk to? Ideally, we would love to recommend to have a project champion from the client team, meaning a person that will be in charge of collecting all the data needed for the project and will be the point of contact between the brand and the analytics team. When it comes to data requests itself, obviously this is prepared by the analytics team, but I think it's very important to get the client point of view on this because the client know their reality more than anyone else and it's very important that they can share their insight and add their insight when it comes to the other data that could be collected as part of the process. I wouldn't emphasize more the importance of building a strong relationship between the analytics team and the brand team so we can both deliver ideally to the project 
within the same deadline that we have agreed. Also, it's very important to set up a regular meeting with the client, ideally, again, once a week, where we can exchange on the challenges, the discoveries, and use the client as a sounding board when it comes to the different steps that have been made on the project management and the project in general. Data collection and check-in. We just finished the kickoff meeting where we have now a clear understanding of the business questions, the deliverables, the timelines, and the refined data request. That is a combination of the initial data request that the delivery team has prepared, enhanced by the input from the client. Now it's time to send officially this data request to the stakeholders that have been identified in the kickoff meeting. Also, it is very important to make sure that data is checked as we go and to track the data collection phase. Don't leave it to the end to inform the client that you are missing a piece of data or that some of the data that has been sent is, uh, is inaccurate. So please make sure that you revise and you look at the data as you go so you inform promptly the client when something wrong is happening with the data that is being received. Also, it's very important to request from your client any prior marketing mixed modeling research or any prior research about the brand. That's what we call ground truth elements. And I really recommend you to collect as much information as you can during this phase because that can only serve you when you are doing the modeling and can only help your modeling exercise. Getting, for example, uh, data about attribution or data about lift studies is very important because those can serve as hypothesis for your modeling. Today, we call this triangulating, meaning that we use different elements, different piece of researchers when it comes to informing the marketing mix modeling exercise. So marketing mix modeling doesn't have to evolve in silo. It has to be part of the ecosystem of all the research and all the analytics that the brand is performing. Now, internally within your team, you need to be able to set up your project folder, meaning the different folder that need to be created as part of the project. I also encourage you to use professional project management tools in order to track the different phases and the different tasks that need to be achieved as part of the project. And make sure, again, to inform your client anytime that there is a slippage when it comes to the data availability and data accuracy, so you keep revising the timelines and make sure that you can deliver on time despite all these challenges. Data processing and understanding is the fifth phase of our marketing mix modeling project. Here, it's very, very important that we chart all the data that is being received by the client. As you know, we can receive data from different sources and we can receive different metrics related to the same variable. So my advice to you is to make sure that you chart all those metrics and compare them to one another to make sure that the story behind impressions, spend, clicks is the same, for example, and make sure that the data you have at hand is accurate. Also, it's very important to keep up with those weekly meetings that you are having with your client, because as you are discovering data, you will be building hypotheses, many of them actually. That's why it's very important to use your client as a sounding board when it comes to those hypotheses. Am I on the right track? You think that this could happen? What happened in this particular period? We have seen an anomaly over here. Do you think that this is related to promotion or perhaps it's related to the latest media campaign? Please do not hesitate to involve your client in the process. You are partnering in this and you are making sure that both you are going to deliver the best project. That's a win-win situation. And that's exactly what I recommend you to do. Internally, you need to make sure that all your resources are on track, that all the tasks are being performed and that you are building what you call the data status or the data check presentation. The data check presentation is very, very important because that's where, you, that's where you will be graphing back and presenting back all the charts to your clients. So you need to make sure that you have a comprehensive list of everything that you have received. And the importance of this phase is that once you obtain the official data sign-off from your client, it means that the data you have at hand is confirmed and you can start the next stage, which is the modeling stage. But please make sure to ensure that you have the official data sign-off from your client before proceeding with the next phases. Model building and evaluation. Based on our experience, 
we strongly recommend to articulate this phase around three iterations. In each iteration, you should be involving the client and you should get as much feedback as possible so you can incorporate that feedback in the next iteration. Use your client as a sounding board for your hypothesis and also to collect additional hypotheses. During these iterations, it's very important that both statistical and commercial elements are being assessed. Having a sound statistical model, as you know, is not enough. It's very important that the findings and the output of your marketing mix modeling resonates well with the client. And that's why getting their feedback early stages is very, very important for the success of the whole project. In this iteration, it's very important to make sure that all the data is prepared and all the transformation have been performed in order to create all the features that are needed in the context of the marketing mix modeling project. Then we can quickly run automated modeling in order to get an initial equation or an initial model built that satisfies the standard statistical constraints. Next, the analyst needs to make light tweaks to the solution that is provided by the automated modeling in order to make sure that some of the commercial constraints are also being observed. That's the final output that will be then presented to the client team in order to get their feedback about both the statistical and the commercial uh, impact of the equation when it comes to understanding their business. Iteration two. Of course, we strongly recommend that at the end of each meeting you are having with the client, that you put together the minutes of the meeting, you send this to the client to make sure that you, you are both on board when it comes to the understanding of what needs to be achieved and what needs to be changed. So here, the marketing analytics team needs to take that feedback on and implement it in the model. An additional layer of commercial understanding needs also to be added based on the discussion that we had with the client and some simulations need to be run as well. The other layer that needs to be added in this second iteration is to further check the model robustness and run the first optimization scenarios. Once we finish this, then we can sit again with the client team to gather their feedback, mainly about the size of the ROI, the contribution, the hierarchy of the sales drivers, and understand whether the model overall makes sense to them, especially when it comes to their expectations from the drivers of their sales. This third iteration is more of a refining iteration rather than a modeling iteration. Because by the end of the second iteration, we would have finalized the model, we would have gathered all the feedback from the client, and we are ready to extract all the results that are needed from the client. Of course, in any marketing mix modeling project, we have very specific questions to answer. And that's where it becomes very important to zoom on those questions and to look at the variables that can provide us answers when it comes to how to address those specific business questions. So we'll be wrapping up our modeling, we'll be ensuring all the necessary cleanup of the project and making sure that we extract results at the granularity that is requested from the client. That's where as well we start writing the insights and recommendations, which is the most important part of any marketing mix modeling project, alongside any optimization results that might have been required by the client then those results will obviously will be presented to the client in the form of final deck and final follow-up will be organized from them. Dissemination of results and insights. So this is where once we have delivered the presentation, we're gonna send the presentation to different stakeholders, find out whether there are other presentations that need to be made to other members of the team or to other teams within the organization to make sure that everyone understands the output of the marketing mix modeling project, and also make sure that we follow up on any questions or any clarification that is needed from the project teams. Internally, within your marketing delivery team, it's very important that you set up uh, your uh, what we call retrospective meeting, where the different members of the team will be reflecting on the experience they had on the last project and make sure to capture anything that they have done that should be done in the future because it has been a positive highlight of their experience, but also what are the things that uh, did not go that well and need to stop and we need to stop doing, and the thing that we need to improve and the thing that we need to uh, continue doing. So 
doing this will make sure that any weaknesses, any challenges that have been encountered during the project are being understood by the whole project team and we avoid them happening in the future. Also, any new practices that have been used during the project could be passed on to the other project or to the other project teams so we all learn from our experience and we can improve the delivery of the subsequent marketing mix bonding project, whether for the same client or for other clients. Thank you for watching our videos. I hope this video was particularly useful to you. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.